Okay guys, hopefully you were able to get a good chunk of your homework done last night. Um, I wanted to make sure that I went ahead and helped you go over a couple of the questions at the bottom since the graphs were the ones that I had asked you to sort of try and apply the information on your own. We didn't specifically talk about how to do this. So let me show you um, a couple of these and how I would go about working these out. So the very first thing that I would need to do is figure out what the base function is. In this case, that is going to be y equals 2 to the x. And that's what this line is, this curve here that is graphed. When it says the base function is shown, this is the graph of y equals 2 to the x. So then I need to know what the transformations are. Well, a is equal to 1. So that means that I'm not going to stretch or shrink at all. H, remember you flip the sign, so it's positive 3, and K is positive 2. That means that I have to slide this graph to the right 3 and up 2. Now something that is going to be important for you to note is do not forget that even though it's not graphed here because it's the x-axis, there is an asymptote in this graph, and that's a part of the graph that you're going to move. So you're going to move that asymptote as well. So what I would suggest that you do is pick out some nice points on the graph, ones where it crosses at good, even spots that you can count. Okay, I think these three right here are going to be the best ones to move. This one's going to be too tall. So I'm going to take those points that are in red. Let me pick a different one. Let's say blue. And I'm going to take all of those points and move them over 3 and up 2. Over 3, up 2. Over 3, up 2. Wait, that's not right. I did something wrong on one of them. Over 3, up 2. This point, over 3, up 2. This point, there we go, is over 3 and up 2. You've got to be careful on those things. So that's these three points right here. Now remember that your new asymptote is going to be at k, so that means it's going to be at y equals 2. That's going to be a horizontal line through 2. So that's my new asymptote, and that kind of helps me see where to put my curve, because it's going to curve down through these, and then remember it levels out as I get close to that asymptote. So that was an example that has no stretch factor. So let's look at number four that does have a stretch factor because um, I think that's probably where you had the, the toughest time last night. So again, let's go through. A in this case is equal to one. And A only changes the y's. Because remember, if I stretch or shrink, you can't see me, but I'm stretching and shrinking my hands. Just picture me here. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, if I change by stretching, I'm making the height of all my points taller. And height is the vertical distance, which is counted by the y coordinates. So that's why it's only going to change the y. When I stretch, I'm not stretching to make it wider. I'm stretching to make it taller or to smush it down so that it's more compressed. So that's what this A value is going to do. My H, since there's nothing added or subtracted here, is just going to be 0. And my K is negative 1. So let's go ahead. We have to do two things here that are different. I'm going to start like I did on the other one and pick some nice points. Here's two and here's another one. Okay, there's three right there. So I'm going to start by moving those not to the right or left at all and down one. So that means each of these is going to move down one. Okay. But I also have to multiply all of the y's by 4. So this is 0, 0. This is negative 1, 1. And this is negative 2, 3. That means 0, 0 is going to stay 0, 0 because I'm only multiplying the y's here. This guy, this guy, this guy. 
I don't know where my highlighting is going. Probably behind the graph. Sorry. Anyhow, we're going to multiply the just the y value here. 0 times 4 is 0. That means it's going to stay where it is. Again, the y value. 1 times 4 is 4. So this is going to move to negative 1, positive 4. Here I'm going to do the 3. 3 times 4 is 12, which means it's going to be way up here. And no, I don't know exactly where that's going to be, but I do know that it's going to be really steep. Again, let's graph our asymptote, which is going to be at negative 1, because that's going to tell us where we need to level off. And so what this tells us by this being way up here is that I need to cut down really steeply. And then I get to 0, and then that's where we start to level out. So your graph should look something like that. I am not expecting them to be perfect, but what you know that you can do is you know how to slide points back and forth, and you know how to multiply. So as long as you know how to do those two things, knowing how to graph this equation really doesn't matter. It's knowing what to do to manipulate the graph. That's what it is that really matters. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit helpful to you. And you're going to go on to take some notes today and finish up the worksheet from last night. And then you will also be receiving a new assignment for tomorrow to be due. So that's your homework for tonight. Um, the worksheet that I gave you last night, you did 1 through 6. You're going to do 7 through 11 in class here in just a few minutes, and you're going to turn that in before the end of the day. So I will be expecting to have those on my desk when I get back tomorrow. Have a great day, folks. Bye-bye.